Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the FIO FHE, the FIO Cross Critical FHE Eclipse. So yes, this is an other collaboration I am from Critical, uh, and like his other collaborations, this is based on an existing earphone. In this case, it was the FIO FH3. The FH3 actually came out, I wanna say like middle of 2020, if you can remember back then, and just recently, like over the, the past couple of months, Critical, uh, another earphone reviewer, he actually collaborated with FIO. This is the packaging. You see it's got his name on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, he collaborated with FIO to sort of put his own spin on the tuning of the FH3 and produce this earphone, which is not the FH3, it is the FHE Eclipse. And um, yeah, wanted to, uh, to, to, to tell you about it. So I've, I've had it actually for a couple of weeks now, but it's interesting that I mean, if you've been following this channel, you've, you, you're you probably aware this is not the first Critical Collab earphone I reviewed. In fact, it's not the first Critical Collab earphone that I've reviewed this year, and it's not even the first one I've reviewed this week, because I reviewed another one a couple days ago. But that is beside the point. Uh, the FHE, interestingly enough, was the one that actually got announced earliest in this past winter. I think it got announced back in November, but it was the last one that I got to hear. And fortunately, I have had the chance to listen to it now for a couple of weeks and comparing it with some other earphones, including the Midnight and the original FH3. And I'm ready to let you know what I think about this. So first up, just some specs out of the way. Like the original FIO FH3, this is still a hybrid earphone, which means it's got two balanced armatures for the mid-range and treble and one dynamic driver for the bass. Uh, price on this is up a little bit. The original FH3 costs 130 bucks, I believe. I mean, their, their prices are kind of all over the place, but I think it's about 130 bucks. Here with the FHE, it's 150 bucks. So it's a bit of a, a step up in price. Um, and it's only available, I believe, at Shenzhen Audio, which shout out to them for sending this in for review. If you wanna check out the FHE, I do have it linked in the description below. But otherwise, I don't know, that's probably about as much setup as I have for this review, except to say that, like all my other reviews, this is a live stream, so if you're watching now live, you have any questions about the FHE, FH3 comparison, et cetera, et cetera, that I don't answer during the review, stick around. Leave your comments in the live chat, and at the end of the review, we'll have a bit of a back and forth conversation. Hopefully get to all your questions. But for now, let's just go back to the table and start talking about how this thing well, I was going to say how, how this thing sounds, but I'm going to start actually just by talking about what comes inside the box. And so again, a reminder, this is the box of the FIO Cross Critical FHE Eclipse. Uh, pretty simple packaging, but it's nice looking. Uh, and this is what you get inside of it, which as is pretty typical for FIO, it's a pretty, pretty wide selection of, of accessories. So you get this fairly hefty kind of Pelican style carry case. Personally, I've always found these things a little bit too, a little bit too extra for me. Like they're, they're pretty, it's pretty bulky, but I don't know if you're just, you know, want a place to store your IM safely. That's definitely not a bad spot to do it. Um, excitingly, well, no, I'm actually happy that they also include this much smaller, more pocketable carry case. For me, this is the sort of thing that's a little bit more functional, a little bit more practical because you can actually fit this thing in a pocket. That said, this is pretty small. You're gonna have to stuff the FHE in there, but it will work in a pinch, which is nice that they included that. And of course they include uh, ear tips. Uh, you, you saw there's a plethora of ear tips in here. I just left out a selection of them so we could look at them up close and personal. Um, they are basically three different types of silicone ear tips and then one style of foam ear tip. And this is pretty typical for FIO. Again, they're pretty good about including a lot of different accessories, but you get two different sizes of the foam ear tips, but then you also get three different sizes of three different styles of silicone ear tips. Um, I, they usually label them. They usually come in like a package where they're labeled. I don't actually know what the labeling is right offhand, but I'm pretty sure this is their balanced ear tip. This is their vocal ear tip and this is their bass ear tip. One thing I will say is I have measured these ear tips on other earphones before and the effect that you get does not actually really match what the what the, what the, what the name, the labeling of the ear tip means. So I, I mostly would just consider these 
different styles of ear tips, you can try and see what fits your ear differently because they are actually different enough that it can make a difference. That has a lot of uses of the word difference and I guess that will lead me into talking about this thing that's very, very different. This is a very different way to brush your hair, but um, you can do it if you want. Now, this is for cleaning your ear tips or your, your earphones, which we won't go into detail about because that's kind of gross. Otherwise though, you get this thing, you get, you get the earphone itself. And so this is build quality wise and form factor wise, almost identical to the original FH3, a couple of small differences that I'll point out. But uh, if you remember my review from a couple of years ago, um, these comments are basically going to be the same. We'll start with this cable, which is uh, a, a, a cable that I've seen on some other file sets. They've kind of stopped including this with their latest. Um, but if I'm honest, like this is actually a pretty decent cable. This is maybe one of Fio's better cables. And now that gets us to the first difference between this and the FH3 that I have. The FH3 came with this exact same cable. Like it looks identical, but interestingly enough, the, at least this copy of the cable that I've got doesn't have some of the problems that I had with the cable that came on the FH3. This cable with the FHE is not as springy, like the uh, the FH3 cable was for some reason just kind of springy and stiff and it was a pain in the butt. This one, honestly, like it, you can see it roadie wraps quite well. Um, you know, it's a, it's a double thick cable. Let me zoom in on that so you can take a look. It's basically two cables side by side, which makes it a little bit wide, almost behaves like a flat cable, but not quite as ornery. I think that's the right number of R's in that word. Uh, not quite, a, quite as ornery as uh, the one that came with um, the, the, the FH3. So I, I don't know if it's just, a, I imagine it's just a difference in the manufacturing materials. Like they're using a different silicone now. It's less springy and much better. And as it is, like, honestly, I think this is a pretty decent little cable, especially for an earphone in this price range. Uh, and then apart from that, well, you've got the earpieces themselves, which have, again, uh, the second pretty minor difference that I will mention, um, you might not even notice that aesthetically, this is basically identical to the original FH3, but let me pull in the FH3 just so you can know what I'm talking about. You might see that the number of ridges on the outside of it is actually different. The FH3 had three ridges. The FHE has two ridges and I, it doesn't make a big difference. I think honestly, it's a pretty handsome little earphone. Um, I like the way that the FH3 looks and I think that the FHE here looks similarly good. Uh, and I guess it's kind of nice that they just made a subtle difference to it so that if you happen to have both of them, you can't tell them apart. And it, it feels maybe a little bit less phoned in. So I, I actually quite appreciate that. Otherwise, what can I say about these earpieces is that they are made out of all metal. They're very nicely made. Um, they've got a decent amount of weight to them, but they honestly don't feel heavy or anything like that. And then I would say size wise, these things are pretty medium size. If you have small ears and you're concerned about a big earpiece, I don't think you have anything to be concerned about here with the FHE. In fact, I'll do a little bit of a fit demonstration so you can take a look at what this thing looks like inside my noggin. Zoom in on there so you can take a look. Yeah, the it's a relatively, you know, small form fitting earphone. It's not like a custom molded shape the way that something like uh, you know, the C Audio you may or Midnight that I recently reviewed or the A Audio Legacy, but um, generally I, I find it a very comfortable set. The one issue I will say about the, it's true of both the FH3 and the FHE here, is that it's not necessarily the most secure fitting I am. So in terms of ergonomics, I would say ingress and egress are good, comfort is good, and then fit security is okay, it's not bad but it's, it's not great. Uh, and that's actually why you might've noticed I put spring tips on here. These are not the stock ear tips. These are moon drop spring tips. And yes, I am an unapologetic spring tip shill, uh, but they actually, they help make these things fit for me a lot more securely. They just stay in place and I don't have to fiddle with them as much. Whereas with the stock ear tips, I don't know, I would say like every 20, 30 minutes or so, I just kind of have to like refit them into my ear and, and make sure that they're not sliding themselves out. But otherwise, I don't know, pretty happy generally with the build quality on this set. The aesthetics of this set is really pretty handsome earphone. Um, and then of course, again, the, the, the typical file accessory package um, is definitely not lacking. So that is everything that I have to say about the physical qualities here on the FHE. So what do I think? about the sound and like I typically do, I'll just start by talking about as I'm talking about this thing, this, this cable's 
being a little ornery, so, and, it, and it's bothering me. So let me let me re roadie wrap this real quickly. Um, but yeah, like I typically do, I'll start by just kind of describing the general sound signature here on the FHE, and this is where Critical steps in, right? So the original FH3, uh, the one I mentioned came out back in 2022 that this is based on, I would describe it as a very kind of sub bassy, bassy, somewhat neutral mid range focus tuning. And that might sound almost exactly like what you would expect Critical to be tuning for. But here with the FHE, Critical's tune was trying to make this thing something different, trying to make it something a little bit standout. And what they did here with the FH. E is they just gave it gobs and gobs of bass. And if you look at this thing on a frequency response graph, yes, of course, there is lots of bass there that is quite visible. Um, and in listening experience, it's there. I think it's worth calling out that the bass here is not entirely sub bass focused, right? So a lot of uh, a lot of modern earphone uh, tunings, especially you know some of the stuff that Critical has been working on, is really focused into the sub bass frequencies, which is cool because then you don't have to worry about mud. Here with the FHE, you definitely get a lot of sub bass, but there's also I would say a decent amount of meat on the mid bass, which I wouldn't describe this as muddy. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to that in a bit, um, but yeah, I, I don't think this thing risks being muddy at all. Uh, but there is a notable amount of mid bass on this, which gives it just a little bit of extra body versus what you might expect versus uh, a, a typical sub based tune earphone. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting about that difference is that frankly, a lot of music doesn't have a lot of sub bass in it. So that's why you can kind of crank up sub bass in a lot of cases and not really suffer consequences with it. But you might also not really hear it in a lot of a lot of music, especially older music. If you're listening to like you know older rock albums and stuff like that, there's just not really any sub bass. So you might not even ex experience the fact that a sub bass boosted earphone has boosted sub bass. Here with something like the FHE, because the bass is much more, it's boosted earlier, so you get some of that sub bass or sorry that mid bass body into it. You're gonna notice that bass boost on a lot more in a lot more situations where you wouldn't notice it on something that's more sub bass focused. Okay, that was a, a mouthy way of saying this thing has got definitely a lot of bass. Now, for the rest of the frequency response, um, I would say this is definitely a, an unapologetic V-shaped sound signature, which means that there is some clarity up top, right? There's a little bit of emphasis in the vocal region um, and a little bit of emphasis in sort of the lower treble region. And that you know, I mentioned this thing doesn't sound muddy or anything like that. I think that that emphasis in the upper mids and lower treble is contributing to that. It's just giving you a nice sense of clarity up top. Um, and uh, 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 yeah, the, generally the sound signature, again, V-shaped sound signature, not so much a mid-range focus sound signature, if that's what you're looking for. So that is the general signature, the tuning here on the FHE. Let's talk about the things that I like about the sound before I get into a couple things that maybe I don't love. And okay, the bass on this thing is, you definitely know, uh, I'm not a big bass guy, but the bass that's on here, I would say it's too much bass, but it is reliably clean bass. Um, and it's not overly lean. Like I was just describing um, with the, that difference in sub bass versus mid bass. Um, a lot of times with that sub bass, emphasis, you can get a sound signature, end up with a sound signature that sounds a little bit lean and a little bit anemic. And again, with certain music, uh, can be a little bit disappointing and you definitely don't get that here with the FHE. And I like that. I like the, I like the mid bass body that is on this set. It's pretty good. It gives you a nice thump for things like kick drums. Um, but then because it also has that, it, like it fully extends into the sub bass, you still get that really deep dig in the rumble. Uh, when music calls for it. And again, a lot of music doesn't really call for it, but when you find stuff that hits it, this thing can definitely deliver. I would also say the other thing that really stands out for me about the FHE, and this was true about the FH3 as well, is that I think this has a bat above average sound staging and just a sense of separation, sense of 3D-ness to the sound. That was really what I, I loved about the, the FH3. And it's also true here with the FHE. And so that combination of like a really nice sense of separation and layering in the sound, plus that just pretty extra bass, I think makes the FHE generally a lot of fun. 
So that's this, what I like about the sound here. What are the things I don't love so much? Eh, there's a couple of things and it's worth talking about, but again, you know, I'm going to say this, it is more bass than I'm looking for. And in some cases it can sound a little bit, just a smidge ridiculous. Again, it makes it fun. So I would consider this definitely a fun set. If you're looking for something that's neutral and is not going to ever sound ridiculous, I would look for something a little bit more neutral. But uh, if, if you're just looking for fun and you're okay for a little bit of ridiculousness in your life, and, and as much as I, you know, say I'm not a bass guy, I can stand for a little bit of ridiculousness every once in a while. I, I, I don't, I don't mind it, but uh, it's definitely more bass uh, in the tuning than what I would like. And along the same lines, like my typical preference is for a mid-range tuned earphone. Not that a mid-range tune is not a lot of fun, um, but I tend to prefer a mid-range tune. And the mids on here are they're they're okay. Um, there is some presence from that upper mid-range lift, but frankly, just not a lot of nuance in the mid-range. So I would say that while the, well, we'll talk about how this thing compares against the FH3 in a little bit, but um, yeah, I would just say generally the mid-range, not the, not the focus here not the emphasis. And then also actually like the FH3, I would say the treble here is a little bit on the plasticky side. I don't know if it's from the balanced armatures um, that they're using or something else with the tuning. It is interesting. There's a character to it. It's not necessarily like a sharp or an uncomfortable character or anything like that. It just kind of has a, a bit of a low res um, quality to the texture or to, to the treble. So again, not at strength. It's, it's definitely all about the bass here with the FHE. So on that note, that is basically all of the thoughts that I have on this earphone. But let me bring in a couple of others and talk about how they compare because you know, it's one thing to say things about an earphone in isolation and another to kind of put it in the context of some other earphones. So what I'm bringing under the table is I have also the original file FH3. Um, you can tell because it's got three ridges on it. Uh, this is again, the earphone that is a precursor to this one. Uh, but then we've also got Krenicle's other recent uh, tuning collaboration, the C Audio Cross Krenicle Yume Colon Midnight after birth, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so these are the three earphones I wanted to spend a little bit of time comparing. And so up front, let's just talk about the general specs and pricing. Both of these are, well, actually all three of these have, I think exactly the same driver configuration. They're both, they're all three hybrids. They all three have two balanced armatures and one dynamic driver. Pricing on them is not exactly the same. The FH3, like I mentioned, came out around 130 bucks. Uh, the FHE Eclipse up to 150 bucks and the C-Audio Yume Midnight um, 200 bucks. So there's a bit of a price gap here, but I thought that there were enough similarities here that it actually still met, made sense to compare them. Now, in terms of sound signature, which is where we'll start by ranking these things, um, I'll just go ahead and rank them, I, I guess, like this. I'll probably rank them like this. Um, I don't know. Maybe these two are about even, just in terms of tuning choices. Um, the FH3, the original FH3, why I actually like this one better than the, the new FHE, is it's just more mid-range focus, which I really like, but it still has pretty much like almost equal amounts of sub bass, not quite as much in the mid bass frequencies, which is where this thing trades off, right? So if you are looking for a bassy set you don't really care about the mid-range nuance and stuff like that. Well, this is definitely going to be more to your liking. But if you kind of want your your ba your base and eat it too, your your cake and eat it too. That's probably the saying. Um, the FH3 I think is a better balance. It's just you get a, a, a surprisingly nice and even mid-range while still having a ton of pretty fun sub bass. Um, so for me, that would be my preference. I would say the mid-range maybe does have a bit of a haziness to it, a bit of a low contrastness to it. Um, some people might call it a honkiness. It's, it's pretty mild, but um, that does keep it sort of sounding mid-range focused um, while still giving you that gobs of bass. And then next up, these both are pretty different, frankly. Uh, the, the FHE, I would, again, describe very much as a V-shaped sound signature, not mid-range focus gobs and gobs of sub bass, um, pretty decent meaty mid bass as well. 
uh, and then somewhat forward vocals. Whereas here on the Midnight, the difference is the bass tuning here is more focused in the sub bass. There is some meat on this. It's not a very lean bass. Um, so I'd say both of this is probably the leaner bass of the three. Um, but this is leaner than that one. If you're, uh, you're, you're trying to rank these things in terms of leanness. Um, other differences is that I think the vocals forwardness here is less so. The, the, mo the vocals are a little bit more laid back and relaxed here on the Midnight versus the FHE. The treble on the, the, the Midnight, you get a lot better extension, especially into the upper treble. Um, and it does lend a nice sense of weight and stuff to, 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 to cymbal crashes and stuff like that. So there are definitely some advantages kind of going either way. Um, I think for me, honestly, I, I'd have a hard time picking between these two just purely on, um, just purely on tuning. But on, I, I do also think a lot of it is going to come down to the technical differences, which I think we can now talk about. And the technical differences, I think, from my preferences, I would rank them pretty, pretty firmly like this. So. Like I mentioned, both the FHE and the FH3, uh, I, I think they've got above average soundstage and layering characteristics. They're both about on equal par there. Um, I think that the mid-range is a little bit, well, quite a bit, frankly. You just get a better sense of that sort of micro contrast in the mid-range, where this is more focused on macro contrast, again, with that V-shaped sound signature. And because of that, at least for me, the mid-range comes across as more technical. You get a little bit more sense of texture. Again, that 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 micro sense. If you're listening to, you know, vocals that maybe have a, a, a what's the what's the term I'm trying to think of? I'm, I'm blanking on it right now. But you, you get you get vocals with maybe a little bit of vocal fry, a little bit of graveliness in them, or maybe even a little bit of breathiness. I think the tuning here on the FH3 lends itself to that and it, and it delivers it pretty well. Whereas here you'll lose a bit of that nuance. And so that's why I personally would rank the FH3 as a little bit more technical, even though they both really do uh, excel in that sound stage and layering. And then back here, the Midnight, I think the bass on this thing is pretty tight and the, the extended treble gives this a, a bit of an edge over these in terms of the treble presentation, which normally I would probably prioritizes is my treble to be honest but the mid-range on this is just really pretty smoothed over and i found it really it's not super engaging because of that and maybe related i felt like you know you get a decent sense of depth with the tuning on here with that um that sub bass emphasis and the upper treble kind of giving it that sense of 3dness but it is somewhat of a narrow 3dness whereas these these two are both i found just kind of a lot more fun to listen to but um I don't know. It's really that mid-range smoothness that, that that kind of spoils the experience for me here on a technical front. So again, while I was kind of like struggling between these, determining which one of these I liked better tonally, like just looking at a graph, I should like this one better. But in listening experience, I found that uh, it's just a little bit, a little bit too warm and laid back, um, and a little bit too smoothed over. Now, in terms of form factor, I don't know that I'm going to rank these. They're they're just kind of different in different ways. Well, these two are not different. These two are identical in terms of form factor. I'd say they have an easy fit. They're very comfortable because they're not especially deep fitting earphones or anything like that. Um, and then the only thing that I would say is that they're not the most secure fitting IMs. They're pretty good when you put spring tips on them, but I gotta I gotta I gotta say that out of the box they don't come with spring tips. So. There you go. And then the cable, if it comes with this cable, I think it's a pretty good cable. If it comes with the cable that came on my FH3, which was the same cable, but made of a slightly different material, um, that one was really annoying to the point that I don't have it on my earphone anymore. So uh, I'm just guessing that was like an older, an older manufacturer and the newer manufacturer seems a little bit nicer, but I don't know, there might be a bit of a dice roll there. Now, when it, when it comes to the C-Audio uh, Midnight, I would say one thing that's worth calling out is the fit on this thing is going to be a deeper fit. Uh, I don't know if it's going to come across entirely here on camera, but the nozzle is a little bit longer versus the FHE. And because of that, for me, it fits deeper inside my ear canal. Uh, that does make it a more secure fit, um, but maybe not quite as comfortable. So it's a bit of a trade off there. The bigger issue that I had here with the Midnight in terms of form factor, I actually like the cable a decent amount, even though it's a little bit stiff. I, I generally like the cable. Um, the bigger issue that I have with this is that that seal, because I don't know if it's because of the deep fit or, or, or something else, 
Um, the seal is sometimes like over overwhelming. Like there's a bit of pressure buildup in my ear, which sometimes actually impacts the sound of the earphone. So uh, for me, this was the one that was the most fiddly to deal with. Um, if you're prioritizing form factor, I would say maybe these two are, are, are a smidge better because you don't have to worry about that. But otherwise, honestly, they're all pretty nicely built earphones. Um, they have, again, a little bit different fit, more comfortable, more secure. You pick whatever is most important to you. But that, I think, is going to do it for my review of the file Cross Critical FHE Eclipse. While I try to untangle this and make it presentable here next to my head. Um, but yeah, I think out of five stars, File Critical Eclipse, I'm going to go ahead and give it a solid four stars. I think this is a pretty fun earphone. Again, not exactly my tuning preference, but that's fine. There's a lot of earphones out there that aren't my tuning preference that I still like quite a bit. And the sound staging characteristics, the, the, the layering and stuff like that, combined with the, the big fun, the big booty bass that you get here on the Eclipse, just generally make this a fun listen. Um, if I were picking between this and the FH3, I still personally prefer the FH3, but if you're worried about the bass being a little bit too lean or you just really want to lean into that funness, the Eclipse, not a bad pick. And if you're interested in checking this thing out, I do have it linked in the description down below. And while you're down, if you found this review helpful, you had fun, whatever, I just want to be cool, hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell so that YouTube will let you know next time I'm live, like I'm live right now. Um, and I guess I'll see you on the next super review unless you're here live now with me, in which case hang out and let's have a little bit of chat. As long as you're not like trying to get back to the Super Bowl or something like that. All right, folks, let me um, 